I'm Franz with Concrete CMS, and we're going to talk about page types. So if you haven't already, you should definitely watch some of the basics videos on just how to edit your site and get around and kind of how Concrete thinks about uh, managing your website. Uh, but assuming that you have, then this should be old hat for you. Uh, if you go to make a new page from the pages icon, uh, you see there's kind of a list of choices here. Page, blog entry, resource. I can click more and I get to blog. Sometimes this is a really long list depending on your site. Um, if I go to just make an empty page, you can see we've just got some really basic areas. There's not a lot going on in this um, view. Uh, conversely, if I discard this, if I go and do something like a blog entry, uh, you'll see my editing experience is different. I go right past in context editing. I'm pushed into composer here. I've got a form. Um, you know, as I do stuff here, it's going to auto save. I can write content and, you know, this just feels like traditional WordPress. Um, I can also switch into edit mode. And so you'll see that content that I'm making, the title, all this is, is being turned into blocks. I can drag these blocks around and make a mess of this page all I want. Uh, it's concrete, so we try to make things really flexible and building block-like. Um, but just setting the, the, the context, two very different editing experiences. So let's get under the hood and talk about how this works and how you can use page types and um, templates to do exciting stuff. All right, so let's jump into the dashboard and you can see pages and themes. Go right in here. Uh, and you can see I've got two themes installed. And from here, even, I can get into page templates and customize. Um, we'll click page templates. This gives me a list of actual PHP files that actually exist in a directory. These are templates. They are, um, they are the most basic element that kind of defines layout. So um, your theme developer is going to build some HTML. They're going to put that in a PHP file. That's the underlying code that says, look, there's an area at the top, an area on the side. This defines the basic block areas. Um, if you think back to that just general page we made, um, there's not much to look at here, excuse me, uh, but just that single big empty block area, um, that is a page template that we are now um, bringing in and kind of using to make page types. If we click on page types over here, uh, you will see there are a few page types to find. Um, a page type is really a model in the database. Page type doesn't have to have any files associated with it in your theme. Uh, and the page type says, look, we're going to we're gonna have an idea. Maybe it's a blog entry or a blog listing or a resource. Um, but we want some kind of concept here around the type of content. And we may have some pre-built blocks that we want to show up there every time. Uh, we may be able to always, we want to always get at that type of content from a navigation, right? I want to do, uh, show me all the blog posts. And so you need to know that thing is a type. Um, so yeah, it's an easy way to think of it is like you're strongly typing content with a page type. This page is of what type? Um, so let's go into one and just go through some of these basic details. Oh, basic details on, um, I'm actually going to go to blog, excuse me, page types. We will go to blog entry and we'll just go through all these. So basic details gives you uh, just some of the summary information we need to know about the page type. So this uh Page type name, blog entry, is what shows up here when I make a little guy. Um, or if I'm choosing just show me pages of type X from the um, page list block, I'm going to get this, this name. Uh, handle, anytime you see handle in concrete, what we're looking for is a string of text with no spaces. So you would use this as a developer if you were writing code that did something unique for this page type. So just put something with no spaces in there, you'll be fine. Uh, default page template. So here what we're saying is of the templates available in the theme, which one do we want to use by default? So one of the things that's cool in modern concrete is you can have different page templates for a single page type. 
So maybe you want a blog where, um, you know, there's a, sometimes the nav's on the left, sometimes the nav's on the right. Um, oh, years and years ago, I saw a blog that was like a couple's blog, him and her, and like they had similar layouts, but they were like complementary. So you could, you could set that up as a single blog entry, but then have different templates for those different layouts. Uh, launching Composer. So remember a few moments ago when we made a new type of just page and it put us in in-context edit mode? That's no. Um, here, because it's a blog post and there's a bunch of kind of form stuff we want you to do, we say yes. Uh, is this page type frequently added? This will put it above the fold right here. So you see how there's a little more here. All these are frequently added. Blog, which is kind of the category page for blog, is not frequently added. So um, changing that little drop down will show up just in fact where it shows up in the pages uh, pages panel. Uh, page templates. So you can choose all of the um, templates that are available here. Um, we're just just right sidebar, but you could have both options and then you could swap them out. Um, publish method. So. Um, you could have pages of a type always show up at a certain point in the tree. Um, you can have them show up anywhere you want. So when you make a new page, you get to choose any, anywhere. Um, or you could have them only show up underneath a certain type. Uh, that's what we want here. We're making the blog entry, and we want the blog entries to always show up underneath the page type of blog because we use that blog page type for the category listing view. So that's selected, and that gives us uh, this dropdown. Um, selector form factor, um, in page site map. I think this is going to let you choose when you, um, are choosing where this page belongs. Um, do we give you just a drop down list or do we let you pick anywhere from the site map? So, um, if you were to change this, Hey, it goes anywhere you want, then you probably wouldn't want to select menu because that's going to put all of your pages in a big drop down. All right, so we're gonna leave this. These are just the general settings for your page type. That is basic details. Um, let's do this a little out of order. Um, attributes, uh, if you're not familiar with attributes, there's another video on it. Um, you should check that out, but quickly, attributes are a way of creating data and associating that data with pages, people, files, events, um, other objects using express, you can just put a bunch of attributes together and say, this is a boat, uh, this is a dock, there's a relationship between those. Um, so attributes are kind of variables in, in concrete land. Um, so let's go ahead and look at those first. Um, let's say we want to add a new attribute. We'll jump over to attributes and let's create a new attribute here. Um, and let's do something like, um, hmm, we'll pretend that different departments are posting to the blog and we just want to, um, handle it like that department. Um, we're going to add this to the navigation set. This just controls how attributes are clumped together in interfaces. Um, we don't need to really search by this in, um, from the page search. Uh, these are unique to this type of attribute. Um, we're just going to kind of quickly build this out. If you're really interested in attributes, there's uh, more information elsewhere. Um, let's just uh, do a little bit like this. Okay, great. So we're going to add this attribute. Um, you can see we now have department here. And if I come back to page types and I go into attributes, um, you can see department is showing up here. Um, now I could make this default to um, something else. So if I say look for department, um, I want it to always default to marketing and people can override that um, when they come in next time. Now when I make a new blog post, it's going to default that to marketing. Let's go back to page types. 
All right. Um, now that we've kind of explored attributes a little bit, edit form will make more sense. Um, this is the form. This is the composer form. So we are choosing from that larger set of attributes that's available to the page. We're saying when somebody, when you check that checkbox, we or switch the to um, go to composer to yes from the basic details. So um, when we made the new blog post, we went right to the composer interface. This lets you control that interface. So if I want to add that department attribute to that interface, um, I click the plus and I go to custom attribute and here's department and now department shows up there. I can drag and drop this around, um, put it right there and I could make new sets which would kind of clump those in Composer um, but basically the way I organize my attributes here um, and there may be blocks as well, we'll get into that a little bit, these are blocks that show up on the page um, that impacts how that composer form looks. All right, so we've done details, we've done edit form attributes. Let's get into output. This is where a lot of the um, power really lies. So you may remember that we said we're only using one template with this page type. Right now we're using the right sidebar template. If we had selected multiple templates as available for this page type, we would have a list of them here. And what we're really doing is saying all of this stuff that's gonna automatically show up on this page type that we're making, this, you know, the, the department attribute, the, um, that content block that's in that composer form, uh, where does it go in the page type? So if I come in and click right sidebar, you will see we have something that feels very similar to the editing experience of Concrete, but slightly different. You've got this little arrow pointing back um, it's telling you that, look, we're in Composer, so this is going to be a content block, but um, it's just got placeholder. So um, we'll put this page in edit mode. And uh, all of these blocks are what we call default blocks. So when I make a new page type of uh, blog entry, this stuff shows up um, and it will show up for every new page. So let's say I want to add something to the bottom of this side nav. I'm just gonna add a content block here. Um, and you know, maybe I wanna, uh, you know, say, uh, sign up for our webinar. And have that link somewhere. So, you know, pretend that, that we're making this really compelling content, but um, there we go, I've made this content block. Great. Now, if um, I come out of edit mode, you can see it didn't ask for a version or anything, it's just like, yeah, you're good. Um, any time I make a new page of blog entry, this block will show up on that new page. What we haven't done yet is copy that out to all the existing pages. So if we want to get to, um, you know, our, if we want to add this to all the current pages in the blog, you can see I come edit the block and you see there's this option here that says set up on child pages. So let's click that and we'll get a few choices. So um, do you want to, um, if, if, if you're making changes, this will try to update that block. Um, it's a little tricky because as you saw before, we dragged and dropped stuff around. So once you've made a page, you can start to change the side nav. And in Concrete, we like that flexibility. But when you do that, you have forked your version of the page from the page defaults a little bit. And so it makes it a little bit harder for page defaults to go and find all those blocks and, and update stuff. It'll try, but um, if, you, if you kind of think about how complex this could get, and if you've got a bunch of pages and you've changed the order over here, like what does that actually mean? So um, we tend to try to keep things really simple um, in, in terms of like what happens automatically. Um, so it will try to update the order. It will try to add stuff, but it might just add this block to the bottom of every page. So um, these options look good for now. And you can see it's going through. And in this case, we only have seven blog posts, so it's not a big deal, uh, but it's going through and it has run that process and it has updated all of those blog posts. So if I come out of here and let's bring up 
our little site map and we'll navigate over to blog and I should see sign up for a webinar right and every one of these pages since it got through all seven will have this content down here at the bottom if I make a new blog entry um, you'll see first off here's that department attribute that we added so took us to composer and we've changed what the uh, content creation process feels like um, and if I jump into edit mode you will see there's our little our new block um, and you know Bob's your uncle you're good to go so uh, let's see what else is there to talk about page types there certainly is more under the hood but this should get you going in terms of um, kind of using page types to strongly structure your content and make things happen permissions um, unless you're using advanced permissions this is probably not that important this controls who can make pages of this type and who can edit the page type itself um, and I think the only other thing there was copy so if you want to kind of like use one of these um, page types as a starting point uh, you can do that but explore your default content um, look at blog entry look at resource and kind of see the difference between um, you know how like resource does have its own template for example that, that page has its own look and feel it's kind of this two column layout and so you can see this is going to be very different so um, be careful you can absolutely make site-wide changes that um, impact things uh, pretty quickly and as you notice here there is no gear icon these are not versioned changes when we left edit mode it was like cool did it so um, you know you are you are playing with the cookie cutter not an individual cookie so be thoughtful about what you're cooking uh, but there you go that is page types and templates in concrete hope that helps uh, it's great to have you enjoy editing your site with concrete see you in the next video Thank <music> you.